Now that we've added our floor mesh to our project, it's time to put it into our level and start building the whole thing out. So here it is, and we're just going to put it into the level by clicking and dragging it into the level like that. And you can see that when I do that, we've got a yellow outline, but we can't actually see the mesh itself. Don't worry about that for now. We'll sort it in a second. The first thing I want to do though is get the position right. So making sure that it is selected and you'll know it is because it's got the yellow highlight, but if not, you can always select it from your outliner up here just by clicking on it. And then well, let's have a look in the details panel at the location for it. So mine is currently set to minus 300, minus 90, minus 90, which is not where I want it. I want it to be right at the middle of my level, which in 3D coordinates is 000. zero, zero. So I'll type that in. So we'll put a zero in there, a zero in there, and a zero in there. You can see that has now positioned it over there, which is fine. I can still see it. But if you can't, if you just click in your viewport, I've middle clicked there to make sure I didn't lose my selection and then press F it will bring you nice and close to your asset like that so we've now got that in our level so now we probably want to be able to actually see this so the reason we can't see it is that there are no lights in the scene if there's no lights you can't see and the way that we can get around this for now is where it says lit up here we can click on that and just go to unlit and you can see there's a keyboard shortcut of alt and three for that but we'll click on here and that now makes it much easier to see. Now what we want to do is get more of these floor tiles in so that we can create a larger floor. So we're taking a modular approach here, which means we're taking smaller level modules and building larger level areas out of them. So we're gonna need a second floor. So one way we can do this is to just go back into our content drawer, drag it in like that, and you can see it's nowhere near where I want it to be, so I'll just put it at zero, zero, zero. And I've now got two in the same place. And now I want to move it. And by default, your move tool should be enabled. You can see up here, mine is enabled and I've got these manipulators here. But if for any reason it's not, you can just click on the tool there. So let's say you've got just your selection tool and you can go to your move tool like that. And then this manipulator turns on. And then what I want to do is move that over here. And it's moving well enough and I can get it lined up perfectly. But I want to show you a slightly better way of doing that. I'm just going to put that back. And we've got this up here, which is actually location snapping or the grid snapping. And it's snapping in increments of 10, 10 units, which I think is set to centimeters by default. And we want to change this to 50. So I'll click on that 10 there and make it 50. And then when I move it, I don't have to move it as many times like that. There's just four increments there. And then that's ready to go. And I've deliberately moved it positive on the y-axis so that's 200 if you've gone the other way like that and it says minus 200 it's not the end of the world but i just recommend going in the positive axis so that your project looks the same as mine okay so now we've got two what i want to do now is add a third but i don't want to just keep grabbing them from the content drawer that'll take me forever so we're going to duplicate this time and what we do for that is press Control and d that will do it and you can see it then just moves it a little bit so that you don't kind of get lost and what i'll do is put this back in line with the one that i've just duplicated it from and then move it over like that so we've now got three one two three and i want a fourth and the way i'm going to do that this time is my actual preferred way of duplicating things which is with your move tool on hold alt on your keyboard and then you just drag and then that just creates a copy and we've now got four pieces of that floor and you can see they're all named. There's one, two, three, and four. Okay, now what I want to do is get some more copies of this and we're gonna go over here, fill this empty space there. And rather than doing them one at a time, which will take quite a while, we're going to select multiple. So I'm gonna click on one, then holding shift, I'm gonna click on the other three and that will select them all at once. And then I'll hold Alt on my keyboard and that's going to allow me to copy four at once. So that's great. And now I'm just going to show you one final way of duplicating that I really like, and that's to hold Alt and Shift. And what this does, not only does it copy, but it also kind of pins the camera to it. So you can work your way along without having to reposition your camera every time. So I've now got three lines there. I'm going to add another two, Shift and Alt and drag, Shift and Alt and drag. There we go. And that is going to be the basis of our entire little room, storeroom, I think I'm going to call it. And I'm just going to check that I've got enough. So I want one, two, three, four on this axis. And I want one, two, three, four, five on that axis. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. 
And that will do it for this step. So we've learned about putting assets into the level, we've learned about going into unlit mode, and we've looked at different methods of duplicating the assets so that we can make more of them quickly. So we'll leave it there, and in the next step, we'll get our first light into the level. So I'll see you there for some lighting. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and enjoyable. If you're eager to dive deeper into game development with Unreal Engine 5, I have a fantastic recommendation for you. I highly recommend checking out the course Unreal Engine 5 The Complete Beginners Course by David Nixon on Udemy. It's a comprehensive and beginner-friendly course that covers all the essential aspects of working with Unreal Engine 5. I personally found it to be an excellent resource and I'm sure you'll benefit from it too. Check it out by following my link in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.